Ryan Brown is a happy, healthy five-year-old. But just two years ago, Ryan was diagnosed with an aggressive form of cancer that was spreading throughout his body. That he's alive today is thanks to stem cells and a pioneering physician, Dr. Kurt Sivan, who found a way to harness their extraordinary power to cure. Here, frozen in liquid nitrogen, stem cells are what many believe to be the future of medicine, the greatest advance since the development of transplant surgery. It really opened up new research avenues that we can get into that are going to have a big, big impact. Every cell in your body, whether in your eye or your arm or your brain, started off as a stem cell. They are the seeds from which all other cells grow. Understand how this happens, and you can tell stem cells to grow into anything you want, a muscle, a liver, or an eye. If we say that the stem cells are kind of like a computer, what are the keys that we need to press? What are the words that we need to say? What are the genes that we need to turn on and turn off and regulate in these stem cells to make them become liver versus brain versus blood versus immune cells? But there is a problem. The best stem cells, with the potential to form almost any other cell, come from only human embryos or aborted fetuses. That makes stem cell research highly controversial. Dr. Sivan works with stem cells from blood, not as versatile as those from embryos, but just what's needed in patients with cancer, like Ryan. Ryan was just three when he was diagnosed with a rare form of cancer called a neuroblastoma. The diagnosis was when I understood what the word devastated meant. It was something that was so surreal to me. I couldn't imagine being in this situation. To survive his treatment, Ryan would need new stem cells to replace the bone marrow killed by the chemotherapy, which is where Dr. Sivan's invention came in. He developed a monoclonal antibody, a biochemical hook, which attaches only to stem cells. We could then attach sort of a fishing line to that hook and a rod and a reel, and reel in and purify those stem cells free of the other cells in the marrow. And if there were cancer cells in the marrow, hopefully free of those cancer cells. Using Dr. Sibbon's technique, Ryan's stem cells were harvested and purified, then stored in liquid nitrogen while he underwent intensive chemotherapy. Once that was over, his stem cells were given back. It was an infusion of this much liquid. Um, but the effect of that is just astounding. And it basically gave him the chance of having a cure, a lifelong cure. We see Ryan in follow-up, and we keep our fingers tightly crossed that, that we got rid of all the cancer cells. Stem cell transplants have saved the lives of hundreds of thousands of cancer patients. But the real promise of stem cells has yet to be realized. Here at the National Institutes of Health in Maryland, Researchers have made an early breakthrough in the treatment of a disease that affects millions around the world, diabetes. Diabetics like Lawrence Solo can't produce insulin, the hormone which regulates blood sugar, the food supply for every cell in your body. Most people with diabetes around the world will take injections of insulin with a syringe. This product um, puts the insulin, you can see the insulin in the container here, and it's attached to a tube that uh, attaches to a catheter. And um, every half hour, it gives me a trickle of insulin um, to help mimic how a regular person without diabetes uh, uh, would, would operate, their body would operate. Regular insulin injections allow diabetics to lead normal lives. But there are serious long-term complications, like kidney failure, amputations, and blindness. Insulin is life support for people with diabetes, um, but it's not a cure. And that's the real problem. Working with stem cells from mice, Dr. Nadia Lumelsky at NIH has succeeded in growing islets, the cluster of cells in the pancreas, which produce insulin and which don't work in people with diabetes. We have not only generated cells producing insulin, we have generated cells that produce other hormones made in the pancreatic islets. What Dr. Lumelsky has grown in the test tube are clusters of different types of cell which interact with each other and act as one. In other words, she's created a mini organ. Each of the dots on the screen represent a cell, with red cells uh, being insulin-producing cells. The green cells produce a different hormone. The important thing is how these two different types of cell are arranged. Interestingly, that the mutual arrangement of insulin-glucagon cells here is exactly the same as 
the one in the normal islet cluster. It's the first step to growing more complex organs like the kidney or liver. It uh, shows that stem cells have a capacity not only to produce functional cells, but to undergo uh, self-assembly to generate organ-like structures. Growing major organs is still years away, but the benefits for diabetics could come sooner. Early trials suggest many diabetics could be cured by transplanting islets from donated pancreases. But there are 16 million diabetics in America alone, and only 1,500 donated pancreases. This would provide us with a large supply of these insulin-producing cells for the entire world's population. So it doesn't appear that there are any other avenues that are as promising as stem cell research to fix this problem. So um, this could be a turning point in the effort to find a cure for diabetes. Researchers believe that cure could be just 10 years away. There's certainly no doubting the potential of stem cells. Ryan Brown is the living proof. Ryan will often tell me, you know, Mommy, when I grow older, I want to climb mountains. And I always tell him, you know, you already have, because he's kind of like a, you know, a medical miracle. Quite possibly the shape of medicine in the...